Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy J.D. Wilkes. He's going to tell you a great story about touring with Hank Williams III. When the Shack Shakers had like their fourth try at living all together in a shack in Nashville, there was like two or th one, the first house burned down. Second house was too too expensive for us. I think maybe it was just the third house. The third house was oh, it was so cool. It was like this little bungalow out in the woods along the Cumberland in East Nashville, and um, and it was one of those things. It was like this is the original lineup of the Shack Shakers of the '90s version, trying their best to get things off the ground, and. Everyone's got like girlfriends and jobs and babies, and I. But they, you know, we're all trying to be, live like the monkeys. You know, the, the band, the monkeys, all live in this house supposedly, like on the show. And it's like it just wasn't working out to be affordable, and it just looked like the band was about to break up. So I uh, would wash out. I didn't have a girlfriend to like live with to take care of me, <laughs> like musicians famously do down there. So I just went home to uh, Paducah and would go back and forth like a month or two back at Mama's house and then try it again. So this, I lose track of how many times I came and went like that. At one point, everyone just basically got married and left and had babies and stuff, and the house was there. And so Shelton came in and bought it, and that became sort of the band house. And that's where he, his first Rolling Stone photos, when he first emerged, was shot there at that house that was the Shack Shaker house. That's, and uh, when he pulled his Cadillacs in and took over, and then uh, and then I think uh, that place is gone now. They've, they've raised it, and now it's like tall and skinnies there. They've, they've gentrified all that cool woodland area off of woodland away. Yeah. But I uh, was in his bands <clears throat> for like a month or two. What happened was... Uh, Fiddle Boy, I don't remember his real name. Um, I'm sorry, because he's passed away. And when he passed away, his fiddler, uh, they tried to find another fiddler in Nashville. But so much touring, we got to hurry up and go. We got to train this guy up. We got a guy from Vanderbilt at, who had, had a, who was more of a violinist, I guess. And I think we're at the exit in. And... Um, and so, like, this guy's auditioning basically live, you know, because we got to go. The tour's got to keep going for Shelton and them. He's auditioning on the fly. He shows up. He looks like preppy, you know, kind of has a two-button jersey with an alligator and, uh, and a cowboy hat he just bought because he's got this job with Hank Williams something. And he's like, he's got the mini... Pearl tag still dangling now. He doesn't, he doesn't even know Mini Pearl is, so it, it's like he just bought it just for the gig. And we're about to, I think I was sitting in on Harp, so I'm like right next to him. Maybe I'm there to coach him, I don't remember. But um, we're about to kick into Ghost Riders in the Sky, and he leans over to me and he goes, What's the name of this? Spirit Rangers of the Sea? I'm like, It's Ghost Riders in the Sky. It's like, Oh man, this guy's t like, and so what happened was, uh, that was so funny to me. Like, Spirit Rangers of the Sea, that's hilarious. <laughs> I went and told Shelton that. I was like, guess what he thought Ghost Riders was called? And I told him, he's like, and Shelton's just like, he didn't laugh. He's like, fuck that dude. He's fired. I got him fired. <laughs> <laughs> JD, you want to hop in the bus and keep going with us? So he basically hired me on the spot to do the fill parts on harmonica. So, and then we left. Shack Chickers went home. We had been on the road with them for a month already, but conti I continued on and everyone else went. Me and Joe Buck went in the bus and continued on. And there's all kinds of stories I could tell about that. From that point on, that shaved maybe a year or two off my life, you know, like that I had nothing to do with, though. It's not my doing, but uh, the things I was privy to is uh, probably best left for my memoirs later. So, if I ever write those, you know, you'll have to buy it to find out. What were the audiences like? How were they responding to it? Wild, wild, wild. It was great. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it was um, rowdier than uh, Shack Shaker stuff. It was like there was a biker element or a hard-edged, fogged-out, heavier drug element there that, um, that I, than what I was used to. 
uh, there was like the punks and the cowboys or the cow punks and that kind of stuff. But then there was like this kind of other element that was like, oh, ooh, you know, like I I think I'd seen people like this before. Like, uh, you know, um, it, it was like um, just rougher than I'm used to uh, and not in a, just like a tough redneck way. It was like so, there's like a darker element, uh, an edge there that's like, ugh, you know, it's, it's something something uh, ominous about the uh, certain aspect of those audiences that like, like they go to other types of shows than I do. And Shelton somehow is like bridging the gap between those two things. How uh, do you feel about that? Tom? Well, Shelton, what I like about him is he, he is, it loves everybody it, that comes out and he would stay and sign everybody's autograph to like, almost like too nice because they would commandeer his time and he, he, but there'd be a line waiting and, he would wait to the last person before we take off. He'd also load the buses, uh, help load the buses too. You know, if he had time to do that, but he would roadie for his own act. So he's like really like giving uh, uh, of his time and and um, maybe suffering a fool a little too much uh, sometimes. But uh, he was. Uh, that's the, the the thing I, I admired most about him because he left everyone like uh, glad that, that they had met him. You know, and I thought that's something maybe I should start doing. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. So that, yeah. But uh, there was a, uh, you know, there was some other stuff there that one you'll just have to read about later. And there's nothing uh, reflecting on Shelton. It was just like some hair raising things. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think it was a, maybe a month or two. I was on the bus in the winter up north. It was a hard tour. Uh, just wet with the weather alone and um, the unexpected nature of it, be just getting tapped for this role after his violin, his fiddler died. And uh, it was kind of like heavy, you know, it was a, just a heavy thing, but I'm glad I did it. I'm still glad I did it. And, um, and yeah, I, I uh, it's the first time I'd ever uh, toured in a bus, you know, and got to feel what that was like, got to feel like a, you know, a hot shot, you know, so. That was neat. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to my channel. And if you just happen to see any of those gigs with J.D. Wilkes playing with Hank III, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.